Hi, my name's Charlie Thorburn. Welcome to Mordor Gun Dogs. So this video, the point I'm trying to get across is, uh, is a major part of our training and our ethos and the way we think. So it's trying to get you guys to have a little understanding of some of the craziness that goes on inside here. Um, we spend a lot of time, a lot of time trying to get away from the dog, trying to lose the dog, running away constantly. As soon as they're sniffing over there, we run away over here. It's all about running away from them so that they kind of get the fear and they think they're going to get left behind and they run after us. The quicker you go, the quicker they'll come. The more you wait for a dog to finish sniffing what blade of grass they want to sniff, the more they're just like, ah, he's a pushover, he's boring, I'm just going to do my own thing. But the more you're this dynamic, slightly crazy person who might at any point just run away, the more the dog is constantly paying attention to you, okay? So, I just wanted to do that completely unexpected by the dog, to be honest, unexpected by Ian behind the camera, just to show you what I'm talking about. Is that spontaneous, just I'm leaving, don't look back, just go. Now, I'm not going to do this when my dog's on the edge of a park right by a main road because it's dangerous. I'm doing this in an, in, in an area in the garden, in the field behind the house, in a wood, whatever you've got but an area where it's relatively quite safe. So if the dog doesn't come after you with instant lightning, then a few seconds later, they're not gonna have gotten to any harm. Now, what's the point in this? What am I trying to get across? What is this crazy idea of running away from your dog? If I flip the whole situation round and you go for a walk in some woods somewhere and your dog disappears under the canopy of, of some forestry, they may only be 25 feet away but you can't see them, they're gone. You're walking up and down the track, you're calling them, you're going, oh God, I've lost them, I'm never gonna see them again, what happens if they get caught up in a, in a snare, what happens if they get caught in a bush, or what happens if someone else picks them up, what happens if they go the wrong way and fall into the river? You're constantly worrying about what might have happened, what might happen. What we're trying to do is we're trying to prevent that ever happening, because as you've probably learned by now, a lot of my training methods, it's all about preventing the problem thinking what might happen and preventing it, stopping it ever being a problem. So what we're trying to do is we're trying to show the dogs that feeling of what we would feel like if the dog ran into the woods and we lost them. We would feel very distressed. This, we'd, be, we'd be absolutely panicking. We'd be running up and down. We'd be calling them. We'd be getting ourselves in a hell of a state, calling the neighbors, calling other people to come and help look for the dog. We'd be worried about them, worried what's happened. If we can get a little element of that fear, that worry, into the dogs, then they're never gonna leave you. Turn it around in the dogs, to the dog now. You've run away, the dog's going, oh, they've left me, where, where are they going? Well, but I'm getting left behind. The dog is then in that situation and they're then following you. They then start to go, I need to keep an eye on this guy because he's constantly running away from me. I'm constantly losing him. But if I can just keep an eye on him all the time, I know I won't lose him. And it teaches the dog it's all about you, the handler, and it's not all about the dog. So I never wait for a dog. I use an opportunity when a dog's sniffing a bush to run away. I use an opportunity when a dog's going to the loo to run away. Any opportunity I have, I'm running away from the dog. So the dog's like, God, if I take my eyes off him for one second, he's gone. And I do this every day, all the time. You'll have seen me doing it with Waffle. You'll see me do it in every single video of my, uh, that I think that's, that's posted. It's all we do. We run away from them all the time because we're ingraining this idea into their head that the more that they pay attention to us, the less chance that they're going to lose us. We're just going to go down to the field now with little Mac and we're just going to do a little bit more of it here as well. So you're going for a walk with your dog. You get to the path where you're going to let the dog off. So you sit him down, take the lead off, you pause, you make him wait. It's all about those manners. It's all we talk about are those dog pennies, those simple little things. But this is a good little guy, so we're ready to let him off, we're ready to let him have a bit of freedom and a bit of fun. So we get him to look at us, Mac. Now when we walk off, we don't say off you go, because then you're sending the dog away from you. You're telling them that leaving you is the right thing to do. What we do, just a subtle little thing, but it makes all, it's just getting you in the right mindset and helping you get the dog in the right mindset. We always leave, we always walk off and we say, Mac, off we go because we're both going, we're both going off together to be with you. Pull that kid
but then we try and lose them. Now you can see this little guy here is preconditioned to this training. Mac, sit. He's been trained. You know, this is not a young dog who doesn't know what he's doing. This is an older dog. He's about two years old. He's got a bit of experience. He's got a bit of experience of me and me running away. But that little moment there, he was just quite happy going for a walk and I took off and I ran away from him. And he's like, whoomph, and he's after me. So he's just starting to focus on me. He's like, you're playing this game again, dad. And he's looking at me and he's watching me and he's waiting for that. It's come on. So he comes back. I make a big fuss of him. Well done. What a good little man. Off we go. And we head off again. So what I'm also doing is I'm not telling them that I'm leaving. I'm not telling them that I'm running away. I'm just going and he's learning to read my body language and understand what's expected from him and how quick. Because the quicker I move, the quicker I move, the quicker he reacts. The slower I do it, the less sense of urgency there is. And he starts chewing the grass because he's like, oh yeah, he's hanging around. But then if I go again, do you see the difference? What I say to people is when you get into trouble with your dog or you're about to get into trouble, i.e. they see a deer, they're about to chase it. They see another dog, they're about to run over and play with them. Run the other way. But you've got to do this in advance. You've got to practice this every day, all the time. So that when you come across these problems, when you come across the deer or the dog or whatever, and you run away, you get the effect that I get from Mac. Because if you just for the first time decide, oh yeah, what did that bald guy in the video say? He said, uh, run away from the dog. Oh yeah, I'll run away. Oh, it's not working. That guy doesn't know what he's talking about. What an idiot. It's not gonna just happen because the dog's got to be conditioned to it. He's got to understand what you're doing. If you just run away from your dog, having never ever done it, you are literally going to lose your dog because they're not going to know where you are. You're not going to know where they are. It's got to be calculated. It's got to be orchestrated. It's got to be in a controlled environment, a field where, you know, you don't, you don't have much else going on, the garden, the park, somewhere where, where you know him and he knows you and you know where you are and it's all a bit under control, not just randomly out on a mountain somewhere and you see him chasing a sheep and you run the other way saying, oh, but the guy said he'd come back if I ran the other way. Urgh! Think about it, guys. We are the most intelligent species on the planet. Well, we're bloody meant to be anyway. Think about it from the dog's point of view. You've got to speak to him. You've got to get him to understand what you're going to do. You can't just do it and expect him to listen. Does this mean that we never call the dogs? No, of course we call the dogs. Mac. Mac, come here. That's a good boy. We call them as well, but this, con this conditioning of running away keeps them on their toes, keeps them watching us, keeps them understanding that they have to keep an eye on me all the time. So he's there eating the grass and I'm going to disappear and Ian's just going to keep the camera pointed at him and just see how long it takes for the dog to react. seconds not even seconds probably a second because he's I didn't say anything I didn't say I was going I just left and he was like oh he's going again and that's just come through time and practice okay and that's what you're looking for Mac Mac come on good boy sit so what's this all about we're trying to curtail that independence Everyone always says, oh yeah, you want a happy, confident, healthy dog. Yeah, you do. But you don't want a dog that's so confident, they're quite happy to be four miles away from you in the next blooming county. You want a happy, confident dog that's bouncing around somewhere quite close to you in a safe zone out of danger. There's no need ever, apart from when you're working a gun dog or chasing a long retrieve or something, there's no need ever for your dog to be more than about 25 yards from you. You go, oh, but I like seeing them run. Look at him, He's, he was running around, but he was staying within a zone. There's no need for them to be further away because the further away they are, the more out of control they're gonna be. We wanna try and keep them close, keep them paying attention, and they will naturally and inherently stay close if you condition them to understanding that if they're not close and paying attention to you, 
they're going to lose you. I hope this all makes sense. And if it doesn't, watch it again, watch it again. Write some comments and ask some questions because we're here to help. What we're aiming for is we're trying to just help people understand a logical way of training dogs, a way that makes sense to dogs, okay? A way that makes sense in real life, in real life situations. Not just teaching them how to give you a paw and how to roll over. We want to do things that everybody wants their dog to do. And that one of those very basic ones is just have a dog that hangs around you and a dog that comes back when they're called. We'll advance on some of this training and these methods in another video and use it more as our recall training as well. But I hope this gives you a really good insight into some of the strategies and some of the concepts that we use to uh, get our dogs to just be really happy, willing to please, uh, keen to hang around kind of dogs. Hope you've enjoyed it. Keep watching. And I'm gonna say it for the first time, like and subscribe. <laughs> Sorry, I'm so not into this. <laughs> Um, like and subscribe because apparently that's what will help our videos go to other people so that you, they can watch them as well. Um, and remember the most important thing, you get out what you put in. I don't walk away. I run away because it's about enthusiasm. See you later.